When I was young, going to elementary school, I remember new kids coming to our school. But they weren't Dutch. They were refugees from Bosnia who had fled from the war. This was the first time I encountered both refugees and Bosnian people. They were kind. They were my friends. And they told me stories about people being shot in the streets. These kids and their stories introduced me to the war in the Balkans. Visoko is a small town not far from the Bosnian capital Sarajevo. The remains of the war are still very much present today. Many houses still symbolize the scars of former Yugoslavia. I find it confronting and moving, and I cannot help but thinking about my friends from childhood. What would it have been like? Because honestly, what do I know about war? What do I know about such severe trauma? Visoko is a religious place with the Islam and the Islamic community as a majority. Several mosques can be found here. It is a nice town in which the simplicity of life is still very much present today. The people are very kind and welcoming. They truly make foreign people feel at home. The nature is breathtaking. The mountains, the rivers and the killer views. I also enjoy the food here. I like it that the food is still traditional and local not so much consumed yet by the Western diet. I find it a pleasant sight to still see Ivar and Burek on the tables and in the bakeries. This place still carries true culture, tradition and Bosnian authenticity. And yet, all these things that were just mentioned only cover a part of the town Fisoko. This place knows another interesting phenomena. Recently, this place has been most known for a new discovery that would, like many other archaeological discoveries, challenge history as we know it, that contributes in challenging history the way we're taught in schools and religious systems. As the global educational systems teach us that the Egyptian pyramids were the only ones and that they were built by slaves as tombs for pharaohs. The Bosnian Valley of the Pyramids is what seems to be becoming a global hotspot attracting people from all over the world and from all walks of life. The biggest reason for this is that unlike many other global sites, it's openly accessible to people. The Bosnian Valley of the Pyramids and its underground tunnel systems is actually accessible to visitors or anyone that is interested. Better yet, pretty much anyone can volunteer in the geographical and archaeological projects. While being here, we have met many people from many countries who, like so many others, felt drawn to this place and not necessarily all for the same reasons.
There is a scientific layer of interest to be found here, but also a spiritual one. And these diverse interests arose a feeling inside of me. That made me want to record the different perspectives of people and their particular interests and how they seem to collaborate in this place. The people in this country, as I've travelled around the world, the Bosnians touch me so deeply. For all the tragedy that's happened in this country, it's actually, they have the most open hearts. When you actually start to talk to them, to communicate, they don't judge you on your religion. They judge you on whether you've got a good heart or not. Many of them feel your energy. They talk about you've got a good feeling about you. And they're super open and warm. When you look at the history of Bosnia, it's remained independent for so long. And yet this is what's also attracted wars because it's what people have wanted to control it. There's been people mining gold here, foreigners, even, you know, right back to the Bronze Age. They've come to take resources. Bosnia has something really special and it's not just even in this valley. Something was active in Bosnia that really has created a very unique environment. And you are from Visigo, right? Yes. So do you notice any difference uh, since this discovery in this town? You know, this, here is a very specific situation. You know, there is people, you know, like uh, that pyramid of the sun. We call it Visotsa. It means it's named after that castle up there, not castle, fort. And uh, that was uh, always a family thing, you know, like going with family, friends, girlfriend, boyfriend, they're doing stuff up there. And it was for years like that, you know, it was never something. Then one day the guy comes, he's like, look, it's a pyramid. And you're like, why? How? And uh, there's some people who actually believe it is a pyramid, but there is some people who don't. They just simply know it's a natural hell. But uh, to answer the question, it has changed the way people see Visoko now. To be honest, before the war, Visoko was more than Sarajevo because we had industry here. Then after the war, it was nothing. People didn't know what Visoko is. Where is it on the map? Now, it's a different thing. We, were, we are on the map. Such a small town, we are on the map. People know. And you know, when they ask me, Bosnians from St. Louis, oh, which part of Bosnia are you from? Visoko, they like, ah, pyramids. How is it going there? Did you find Tutankhamun? Did you find the pharaoh? So it has changed the way people see it. You know, it's, it's hard to explain as a person from Visoko from what it used to be and now it's a different story. You know, Bosnia was always known as, you say Bosnia, uh -huh, war, war, genocide, Srebrenica. Now it's more like pyramids, Visoko, Ravne tunnels, energy, crystals. It has changed a lot. Perspective from the outside, well, as well as inside as well. People, it gave them hope again. Thirteen years ago, I first came to this town of Isoko to visit the local museum. And then I saw this. Everybody in Isoko called this natural hill. But I was looking. One side, two, three, four. We have four sides. <laughs> Triangle face. One triangle, two, three, four. <coughs> Corners, same slope from bottom to the top. So geometrically speaking, this is a pyramid. I took a compass, and compass showed me that this side perfectly match north, cosmic north. South, east, west. And this is how the pyramids were built in China, Egypt, or Peru. Four sides and perfect orientation. In 2006, we started excavation. One meter below the soil, we started discovering blocks, rectangular, square, different shapes. We analyzed the material, we took samples, like this one here, 
we sent it to institutes for construction materials, and the conclusion was this was a concrete, artificially <laughs> made concrete. Now, from this topographic map, we have three main pyramids in Bosnia, which we name the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun, Moon, Dragon. They are four sided triangular faces with concrete blocks. When we connect the tops of the Sun Pyramid with the Moon, Dragon, back to the Sun, the distance between tops 2170 meters, 2170, 2170, equilateral trunk. That's a perfect geometrical shape and as such part of the sacred geometry. Sacred geometry, movement of the energy. On this poster above your head, it is made by a special technology called PIP camera. It was developed by English research in the Hedion. This here is the town of Isoko, the hotel, mall, forest. You see those lines, blue and green and red? These are so-called bioenergy fields. Bioenergy fields. They are not visible with the naked human eye, but with this technology you can film it. Whenever you have natural ambient, it can be city, it can be town, it can be forest, it can be natural hill, those lines are always horizontal. horizontal. And to the left, pyramid of the sun, and pyramid of love. You have five pyramids, sun, moon, dragon, earth, love. You see those lines are vertical. Why? Inside the pyramid, the red color, energy. Energy is getting accumulated, getting through the top, hitting horizontal lines, they become vertical. So the energy can flow without the obstruction. So as early as 2007, when we got these photos, we knew that pyramids had something to do with the energy. And then we got a lot of other photos of the pyramids and so on. But then we started hiring experts in energy phenomena. Physicists, electrical engineers, sound engineers, telecommunication engineers, scientists with instruments. Because archaeologists, nobody teach them about the real purpose of pyramids. They teach them fairy tales. Pharaohs, four dynasty, wife, princess. We need science. No archaeology, no geology, no anthropology, no history can help us. Engineers can help us. So they've been bringing their scientific instruments. So we realized that on the top of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun, in the radius of four and a half meters, there was electrical field which is 28 kilohertz in frequency. And then when using drone and hanging different instruments, like this is oscilloscope, seven different instruments, it flies above the pyramid. And this electrical field goes four and a half meters, widening to 20 meters, four and a half, 20, four and a half. For physicists, no doubt. There are so-called Teslas, scalar waves, or some people call them torsion fields. Scalar waves are much quicker than the speed of light. You know how they teach us in schools, Einstein hypothesis, the biggest speed in the universe is speed of light, 300,000 kilometers per second. But this speed is actually not so big. For our planet it is enough, 300,000 kilometers, from here to New York, 10,000 kilometers, so I got the lights here, they can see it in New York in the same second. But if we send the speed of light to our sun, it takes seven and a half minutes. If we send it to our northern star, 700 years. From here to the center of our galaxy, Milky Way, 40,000 years. And then from here, to the center of the universe, where an old guy in the white robe <laughs> and the white bird mm -hmm. sitting, getting very busy creating the worlds and the life and galaxies. It takes five billion years. 
So imagine, if you send information to God, to Creator, with the speed of light, five billion years, by the time He answers us, in another five billion years, ten billion years, by the time we receive the answer, ten billion years, we're gonna get a very long white beard. <laughs> so, from the universal point of view, the speed of light is actually very, very slow. We need something much quicker. The speed of scalar waves is 10 billion times bigger than the speed of light. So the information moves instantly from one end of the galaxy to another. And the Bosnian plane of the Sun is the source of the scalar waves. Sending information, and whenever you have transmitting of information, the pyramids are at the same time antennas. They receive information. So the flow is two-way. So the first potential purpose of pyramids, communication device. All this information still left me with some questions. If these pyramids would function as communication devices, then with who or what are we communicating? And what do we communicate? And what influence does all this energy or all the scalar waves have on us as a species? And what does this or could this mean to this landscape? I believe that this place has huge transformation capacity. Capacity to transform the consciousness in the global sense. The place which has capacity to, to send the healing, not the fear, but the love, and which is going this energy here, which we have been activating with the pyramids discovery. This place is going to, to heal the rest of the world. And the people, when they come here, they experience transformation from different perspectives. Human being is not only physical body. Now, we, we, we know that we are 95% spiritual beings. We have the soul, we have the body, we have the consciousness, we have energy field called aura, we have a mind. And this is going to, to affect all the dimension. So, this is the special place. And to this place, people are being invited. One of the things that has really touched me so deeply about this landscape is I have been everywhere all over the world. I've had a background that's been in science, also in archaeology, anthropology, but also ever since I was young, I've also had a gift energetically to see things and often I kept this super quiet in my careers in science and different fields. And actually, when I came to Bosnia, one of the things that really struck me the most, because I feel energy in different places, haven't always publicly declared it, but I've always had this ability. This place struck me as being somewhere different to any other sacred site that I've been to on the earth, and I've been to many. The reason why this energy was so clearly visible, it was so, you could feel it so much flowing through the body, and also it touched me deeply because it brought a level of consciousness with it. So what I feel with this landscape is what makes it unique is there is something here, both scientifically and energetically, that we haven't got the technology yet to fully understand. But what we have to remember is that our bodies are also a form of technology. We can feel energy, we can see energy, once we start to open up in the right sort of way. And this landscape, there is a consciousness presence, a living consciousness in this landscape that is interactive with us as humans. You know, we're taught to believe we have bodies, we have minds, we're taught not to use our imagination, all these things. And yet these are tools, these are assets that really we've not given enough space for to try to understand. What happens is when we come into a landscape like Bosnia, even people that haven't traditionally formally opened up these gifts start to have a sensation and a feeling. They start to feel something. Even in the tunnels today, we had somebody who was claustrophobic and actually she was afraid of coming in. 
Yet when she came into this landscape, you start to feel expansive. This lady came all the way around the tunnels without one ounce of fear. And she felt like she could breathe, she could be free. This landscape frees us from some sort of the energetic smog that we create with thoughts and the brain. This landscape really rewrites our history books. To me, our interaction with humans, even interactions with other intelligent life forms, actually, this landscape has something to teach us. And what it wants to do now is it wants to reawaken. It wants to reawaken our consciousness, our ability to open the heart, our ability to see ourselves as energy beings, and through that to break down the, the boundaries that are created by human minds. Everywhere we live in this world at the moment, there's tension, there's friction, the mind is controlling, we're in jobs and employment where time is consumed by everything, and we've forgotten what are real places on the earth. We live on a very active and living planet. We have consciousness all around us. And this landscape, energetically, it shows us something unique. It doesn't utilize computers or systems to create energy flows. It has something that is synchronized with our natural planet. It uses the materials in a natural way to create energy beams, to move and shift energy. Even in the tunnels, it has a way of, you can breathe, the oxygen is, it's ventilating the whole system without any technology. This is something we have to learn from. And what does Bosnia have at the moment? It's a heart consciousness of awakening. It helps people to feel calm. It helps people to detach from the stress, from the mental capacity that we have and the pressures of the world that we live in today. What does it do? It also brings people together. This place is about building bridges. As I mentioned before, the valley is very accessible to everyone. And because there is so much yet to discover, people from all over the world are welcome to volunteer. Most of them help to work in the tunnels. I find myself here. I discover myself here, yeah, really. I was uh, in, a, in a black hole in my system town and I couldn't find some sense to do. Even I loved my job as a cheese worker. It was not enough for feel my heart. So yeah, now I find a purpose for my life and I find some, somewhere where, where I can use all my skills, mm -hmm. all my speciality for serve a bigger purpose for serve the humanity and in the same time have fun and and have a super good life here so yeah that changed a lot of a lot of my life now i'm six months here and six months in france i don't know how it's gonna go with the visa and stuff but mm -hmm. i will do my best for it and now i'm coordinator so ah, it's like you. yeah yeah <laughs> it's like um I have something back, I give a lot of time and they trust me, so it's honor, it's mm -hmm. amazing, it's, mm -hmm. yeah. so I do my best. Yeah. <laughs> but I think with passionate people, with just talking about what we like and that's make from alone, we don't want like the same system to have bosses and say to you, no, do that, do that like this, no, no, no. make what you feel, we, we need that. We want that. We work as a team col collaborating and the rest find uh, initiative, be creative and also improvisate with the tool. Bosnian tool are not Switzerland quality, so <laughs> we must fix every time. So it's part of the fun. But that's making everything go more slowly. You, Everything is not so stressful anymore because you stress yourself with little details. Here you can't. There is no place for that. And eventually, if you do, Visoko is going to bring you like, stop now, okay? Okay. So, Polako, Polako, they say, slowly by slowly. Okay, so, uh, about a year and a half ago, I um, started realizing that I had um, energy connections and I started accepting them. So then I went into wanting to learn about electric magnetic energy. 
I also wanted to learn about, you know, why am I connecting to beings the way that I'm connecting to them. And one day I'm um, on my computer and then I have the pyramid of uh, the sun in Bosnia just, just popped up just popped up and I usually never get pops up and this one popped out of anywhere. And I had a voice telling me, click, 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 click. And the moment I clicked, I just, I just, I just knew from that moment that this was the space, this was the place, this was the energetic com combination of where I needed to be. And there was a video of Sue, uh, Sue, Ta Sue, Sue Jones. Jones. I knew it was Jones. <laughs> Sue Jones. And she was doing energy work in the tunnels in that video. And I said, hold on for a second. I'm not crazy. Other people do it too. And I said, I have to be there. And it took me. I went on the website. I signed in. I chose the month. I was here a couple of months after. It just, I, I'm a very ongoing person. When I want something, when something is there, I go for it. And I never let energy flow away. I get on, on top of that train right away. And I got here last August and I did a volunteer work. So, you know, you come here and you volunteer. You work on the pyramids, you work in the tunnels, you really get down and dirty. And I love that. And that's what I did in the month of August when I came here last year. I have a unique ability where I can read information in people and actually what I witness is people waking up, people in very powerful jobs, people of heads of companies, organizations, public organizations behind the scenes are starting to open their hearts and question what is this world about? They start to feel energetic progress in themselves and coming to Bosnia amplifies that. They start to question, what is this feeling I'm having? What is this awakening? And they want to learn more. And gradually what I'm witnessing is these people are now wanting to create a new type of world. They have ideas forming of a new conscious platform for finance, for the way we live. And Bosnia is one of those places now energetically where it's drawing these people together where the world of science could not have separation and boundaries, where the people coming from a biological perspective can actually meet the scientists coming from a quantum physics perspective. And this creates the magic that our world needs to actually take science through to another level. And through that, to open our hearts as human beings, to come away from fear, to come away from the barriers that have been created through religion or divides and to have this tolerance and this understanding. Madalena and Sue were not the only ones who shared that they could feel and see energies here. Others seem to have similar experiences. One of them is Afke. Uh, I came here for the first time in 2016 and uh, we went with Dr. Sam to the tunnels. That was at our first day. And um, what I saw was very special. Um, I saw a sort of light beings, um, mm, purple. And I, I knew it was something uh, from myself, it was so pure. It was like like pure energy, just like uh, like a newborn baby. It was so so. I cried a lot, and um, Sam asked asked about uh, uh, where did they come from? These beings, I I, I knew he he couldn't see them, but Sunny, his dog, could see them too, and. Um, these light beings are from another dimension. I can look in, into dimensions, I can hop dimensions, so I see a lot what uh, most people at this moment do not see yet. They are, they are busy uh, uh, opening up and I think there will be a time that everybody can see all these, these beings. There, there were people with, with us in our group and they, they also can see some things already so and uh, in the beginning it was only me who saw things and, and could tell uh, things so I could tell them any anything so it's it's like yeah 
do you believe me? <laughs> I never believe anybody. Nobody. Never. I'll investigate, but never believe anybody. Never. Don't ever believe what I'm saying, what other people are saying. Don't ever. But investigate for yourself. That's important. And look for yourself and feel for yourself always. To me, there's a consciousness, there's an intelligent flow throughout the whole of our universe. We're very naive to think of us just on Earth as being independent to everything else that we see in our cosmos and all the seen and the unseen things that are in our, our realm. To me, this place also is like there's a different frequency band, just like a radio station. We can exist in the same space, but sometimes you're in the same space and a radio station, but if you tune and change the frequency, you can get different stations. This is what I think is happening here. It's an overlapping of different realms, different spaces, some of which we don't understand yet, but it allows communication with a higher consciousness. And what is this higher consciousness doing? It's wanting humanity to learn. It is wanting not just to touch humanity, but it wants to shift how things uh, function in our world, it starts to optimize potential. For you as a soul, as an individual, what it starts to do is to optimize your health, starts to optimize your performance, and I don't believe it's just about what happens while you're here. This energy is then carried with you. It's building bridges across the world. And when we speak to many of the people that interact with this landscape, they say they go home, they go to other places, things start to unravel. Where there were blocks, things start to become easier. We have to interact with its energy because this is changing people. I've witnessed over the last four years, I've made contacts all over the world, from Asia, from Africa, from Europe, all the parts of the world are represented. Australia, someone's here at the moment from South Africa. It's drawing people together. Do these people want divides? No, they don't. The average person doesn't want war, doesn't want conflict, it doesn't want stress. What we want as people is to be in the right heart consciousness, where we can live in harmony with our earth, with each other, and have a life that is not consumed by time, our time taken away from us by mobile phones and emails, responsibilities for work, for pressures of making finance. We can create that world. And I think we're entering a time, a beginning of a new age, where it's possible. But to get there, we have to believe. We have to open something special inside our hearts. And to start that journey is by feeling. It is by connecting with something that touches you so deeply that you start to question in your life. Uh, before I started uh, volunteering, I was, in, I was arrogant in the sense that I was never really paying attention to around small details. I was always like a, how they say, a horse walking and that's it. Then in 2014, I started volunteering and uh, one month, two months into the program, I started seeing certain things that, you know, I was surprised. I started seeing details of uh, like uh, uh, small rivers, like different uh, stones, it changed my life because then I came out and I saw the world in a totally different way. Like uh, emotions of a person, I know when something is wrong. They tell me, no, nothing is wrong, but your face tells me everything. It's like an open book. It's, uh, it was something very amazing to me. It never really happened like that to me before. Another very interesting part of my journey here in the valley was that aside from the scientific and spiritual approaches, there is another reason why people are drawn to this place. The frequencies that can be found here seem to have healing abilities on the human body as well as the mind. After one month here, I really have some kind of interesting feeling about the softness, about the softness of the nature, softness of the chi. Well, I'm coming here to do teacher training of the style Kyo Yoga, and uh, for me it was important to understand how it's flowing, how it's working, that's with respond to the others. And uh, 
I think was really very nice and very balanced way to express and to receive from the nature and from the elements. I'm suggesting for everyone who came here not only to be passive in the way to expect some kind of response to the energy, but I suggest to make some kind of psychophysical movements which is dedicated to breathing, concentration. Let's say we have this walking in the circles, there is some part in the parks, but I at least suggest to make yoga, qigong, tai chi here. Well, that's really is one strong activation and then I think this pyramids respond in our human activity. We cannot expect to be super passive and only this respond. Respond is there, but I suggest more and you have maybe 80-90% more uh, benefits from the energy together with nature. I think these pyramids have big influence while we have a chance to practice on one uh, organized platform near to the bottom of the pyramids. There is the park and the pyramids and we experienced really very well and very active chi which is create not only about our human uh, activity but it uh, helps from this kind of structure there was organized structure, but I feel that uh, the whole field, the whole frequency was different. So this really responded well. And not only in this case, in the house here too, around. And uh, I think this, this uh, huge object, I think it's not only one pyramid, it's more. And all these underground passages and labyrinths respond to the whole area here. What is the most precious thing in our lives? Once you start getting uh, gray hair, then you realize it is our health. We want to stay healthy with the prolonged life. We have noticed that when people are getting into the pyramid tunnels, which you're going to visit in 10 minutes, that will be your next stop, realize that you go deeper to the tunnels, you breathe better and better. Not very logical. But nothing in Bosnia is logical. <laughs> <laughs> Under the Valley of Pyramids, we have tens and tens of kilometers of prehistorical underground tunnels. Today you're going to probably see five, six hundred meters, but you're going to get a good idea how big this labyrinth is. Why tunnels? Under Giza Pyramids, two levels of tunnels. Under Saqqara Pyramid, Joseph Step Pyramid. Tunnels going for tens of kilometers. And the Shanxi pyramids in China, tunnels. And the pyramids in Teotihuacan, Mexico. Tunnels under the Sun Pyramid, under the Moon, under the Quetzalcoatl, under the Palenque pyramids. My tunnels are always associated with the pyramids. Well, in our case, this is the most extensive underground tunnel network in the world. That's what you're going to see today. And we have not only one level, you're going to see one level today. There are at least two, because we discovered entrance to second level, and most probably between three and seven level of tunnels. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, and you will see, this project is not about imagination, like we heard in the beginning. It is about the physical reality. So, you go deep into the tunnels, you breathe so well. People with asthma, and people with asthma are the best instruments. If you have a problem, then you can feel if it is a good area or not. Inside they breathe so well, they get outside, they don't need air pumps, inhalators anymore. People with the infections, people with the high blood pressure, they get back, it gets normalized. People with the high glucose in the blood, high sugar in the blood, come to the normal level. People with some very serious diseases we can see a great health improvement. For example, this girl from Slovakia, she was using only 47% of her lung. Lung capacity was very low. For three years, she was doing different therapies, the pills, the, nothing was helping her. She came two times to our tunnels, and her lung capacity went from 47 to 84%. So September 2015, she was even volunteering with us, pushing the wheelbarrows. <coughs> People from Prague, Czechoslovakia, um, I'm sorry, Czech Republic, uh, like they measured the sugar in the blood, blood drop, 7.8 before the tunnels. 
Now sugar, if it is 3.6 to 6.1, it's a normal level. 6.1 to 10, risky group, above 10 diabetes. So the guy had 7.8 before the tunnel, he came back, 5.1, dropped to normal level. In other one, 10.5, he came back, 5.7. There is no medicine that can reduce your sugar in the blood in one hour from five points, except for the tunnels here. So the question is why? We need to find scientific answers. This is a combination of 10 factors. The first three factors, the first three elements are the pyramid energies. In the tunnels, we have the best electromagnetic field, the best ultrasound frequency, ultrasound, they will explain in the tunnels, 28 kilohertz. It's the levitation frequency, people feel light. And the third one is very low frequency, called extremely low frequency, 7.83 hertz or Schumann Resonance. Resonance. Resonance is the best natural energy field for us. Until 1990, all around the planet, it was only one frequency, 7.83, but not anymore. Since we've been producing so much bad technology, TVs, computers, laptops, mobile phones, electrical grid, American project HARP, we've been emitting so much bad electromagnetism in the ionosphere. It's putting a pressure on our planet, and planet started vibrating higher. 8 hertz, 10 hertz, 12 hertz, 15 hertz. These are very small differences from 7.83 to 15 hertz. But on the cellular level, we feel that. Because we are born at 7.83. Now we are not in our energy field anymore. And you know, we wake up in the morning, we already don't have time for anything. Pressure, stress. Well, in the tunnels, on the pyramids, 7.83. Here, 12 hertz. We move 50 meters, 15 hertz. In the tunnels, we go back home. So, these are first three elements, pyramid energies. Number four, negative ions. The medical science knows that negative ions are very good for our health. Negative ions connect with the dust in the atmosphere, goes to the floor, so they clear the atmosphere. They raise the level of oxygen in our body. They kill viruses and bacteria. In our homes, offices, very low concentration of negative ions. 100 per cubic centimeter. We go outside to the downtowns so or big cities, 400. We go to the villages out at open, 800. We go by the rivers, mm, nice, refreshing, 1,500. The highest concentration in Bosnia is uh, one of our mountains, they call it Olympic Mountain, Igman. 4,000 negative ions in the pine tree forest. Very healthy. Well, in the tunnels, when we first measured the concentration, they were reaching 18,500. And nowadays, they are between 40 and 60,000 negative ions per cubic centimeter. 10 to 20 times higher than at the healthiest place in Bosnia. That was element number four. Number five, cosmic radiations. We live here on the surface of the planet, and we love it. Daytime, blue sky, sun, in the evening, stars and the moon, romantic, but a lot of cosmic radiations coming our way, and some of them are harmful. So, our body cells fight those enemies coming from cosmos. In the tunnels, 40 meters below the ground level, no harmful cosmic radiations. The next element, natural radioactivity coming from underground. Sometimes you walk the streets and you're not even aware that some bad radiation is coming from underground radioactivity. And now our cells starting fighting the enemies coming from below, coming from above. <laughs> Well, in the tunnels, using Geiger counters, we measured the values are 10 times lower than the minimum allowed. So no natural radioactivity. The next element, underground water flow. We now know if you have a bedroom above underground water flow, doesn't matter, 20 or 50 meters below your bedroom. 
This water releases negative energy for us. In five years, ten years, we're going to get sick. We don't know why. We get the cancer, we say, why did I get the cancer? I don't drink, I don't smoke. This is geopathogenic radiation. In the tunnels, a lot of underground water flows. But you will see a lot of blocks, like this one here, like these, like those over there. Those blocks are ceramic blocks. They're going to show you in the tunnels. And those blocks neutralize negative energy, transforming to positive. They are strategically laid out in the tunnels. The next element, there are so-called Hartmann lines and Hartmann grids. Anybody knows Hartmann grids? These are lines about 30 centimeters running underground east-west and then north-south. Every two meters by two and a half meters they intersect. Those intersections, bad for us. Those blocks neutralize Hartmann intersections. And the last two elements, number nine and number ten, Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi uh, started at uh, one giga, two giga, three, today is five gigahertz. Five gigahertz is the frequency of the microwave. Mm -hmm. And microwave causes the cancer. Every time you go to the Wi-Fi, to internet, to connect, we are actually surrounded by such a bad electronic In the tunnels, no Wi-Fi. And the last element, number 10, our mobile phones, our cell phones. Cell phones started at 0 0.75 giga. Now, in most of the Europe, it's 4G, you know, 4G, 4 gigahertz. In the US, 5G. In Bosnia and Ukraine, 3G. <laughs> but in this case, it's not so bad. Again, we are coming to 5G. Very bad frequency. In the tunnels, you take the mobile phone, it will say, no service. So, based on those 10 elements, nothing bad, no radiation, no bad radiations. Our body cells don't have enemies. For the first time in your life, you will have a chance to get in the perfectly protected space. And without the enemies, your body cells can start doing their job. What is their job? To fix the problems in your body. To start the regeneration process. To start the self-healing process. At the tunnels, we met Rob, where he worked as a volunteer. Both Rob and his wife came over from the United States to see if the frequencies of the valley could help him cure his physical ailments. Rob has been diagnosed with thyroid cancer. He was rather surprisingly optimistic and hopeful that this place could make a difference for him. My name is Rob. I'm here from Salt Lake City. I'm here with my wife Tanya. And the reason why we came here is because she was here last year and uh, experienced something incredible uh, that I needed to see for myself, as well as meeting several phenomenal people that I also wanted to meet in person. I uh, corresponded with them uh, over the internet, but meeting in person and, and sharing their energy is very different. Uh, so I, I, I felt very compelled to come here and um, it, I would say absolutely has been worth it, uh, 100%. Um, we <clears throat> lost our bags at first and that is, as stressful as it, as it is to lose your bags when you're traveling, is so far in, in the back now. I'm not even thinking about that or stressing about that because the, the experience has been so positive and I would say fulfilling from the standpoint that I feel more capable now to address the issues that, that I came here to address. Uh, so I feel, I feel empowered uh, and I think not only is it the <clears throat> the magic of the land here and, and the, the pyramid and, and what's happening here and the discoveries that are being made, but I think half of the story for me are the people that I've met. The, not only the locals who are very generous, uh, very nice people, uh, and they, they bend over backwards to help you, uh, but really the people who have come here, who have felt compelled to come here for one reason or another, their own reasons. Uh, those people are powerful, they're magical, they're very generous, they're loving, and they share with me not only their energy, but more importantly, 
they share with me skills and tools that I can use uh, going forward to help myself, to heal myself. Uh, and that's where the immense feeling of empowerment comes from. Uh, so I'm very excited. Uh, I, I feel <clears throat> energetic. I feel more energized. I feel this was, this was right. This was absolutely the best decision to come here. Um, I'm getting overwhelmed. It's all good. So every time I am with the people when we were digging, every time that I'm in the tunnels, I come out feeling energized, feeling um, more, uh, more happy, more ready, ready to do anything. Uh, and that's a very powerful feeling. And all I do is go in and, and sit and meditate for a little bit, 15 minutes, maybe 20 or 30 minutes at a time, um, once or twice a day. And uh, I'd been drinking the pyramid water. At first I drank uh, an entire bottle over the course of 24 hours. And then I began to use a capful as uh, Samir recommends, a capful per liter. And we just never let that bottle, we have a glass bottle, and we just never let it deplete. We keep adding uh, more bottled or tap water to it. So there's pyramid water existing and we just add to it. So it, you, know, you allow 10 to 20 minutes for it to um, to assimilate, to um, work its magic and, and, and for the, the pyramid water to change the, the existing water. And we've just been drinking that for the last few days. And we see now with the second aura reading that there's been positive change, uh, especially physiologically and in terms of my energy balance. Um, we see that the extremes that were present when I first arrived are no longer extremes. Uh, so that's very good. And it, it rhymes with how I feel internally. So, so that's, uh, I think, important. What is the most important liquid in our life? Of course, it is water. We are finding water in some of the tunnels. To be exact, five tunnels we did discover water. This water has been there for a very long time. We've done conventional analysis, chemical and microbiological. With those analyses, we basically see if there are viruses, bacteria, what is the pH, and so on. And we realize that this water from the tunnels has no viruses, has no bacteria, or no microbes at all. How is that possible? It's been there for thousands of years. It's possible because of the negative ions. They act as the barrier against microbes. The water is perfectly clean and clear. Now, the water that we drink at our homes or in those bottles, well, pH is about 6.5 to 7, no microbes. Why? Because they use chlorine to kill viruses and bacteria. But the chlorine is a poison, and this is what we drink. Secondly, we have fluorides, poisons. This is what we drink. And thirdly, traces of heavy metals. When they do analysis, they will never show you heavy metals you know, on that list, you know, on the label. There are always heavy metals. This is what we drink. Water that we drink is energetically dead. Now, we send samples of water from the town of Isoko, which is the same like town of Sarajevo or Mumbai or you know, Birmingham. We sent it to Japan, to the famous late Professor Masaru Emoto. He became very popular from 1999. What he would do, he would take samples from different waters, then he would, uh, you know, frozen the water, and then he would film the molecular structure. So, we sent the water from the town of Isoko, and this here is the structure of that water. It's deformed. doesn't look good. The same thing is here, or New York, or Paris. But then we realized, if we take this regular water, and we give it, let's say, to the Buddhist monk, who perform mantra of love for one hour. For one hour, the monk is saying sincerely, he's actually telling water, I love you, I love you, I love you. The water changes the molecular structure. It becomes hexagonal. Why hexagonal? It's the most powerful geometrical shape 
when it comes to the energy. But then you take that water and you expose it to the heavy metal music. The water gets scared, it changes the structure. Or contaminated water from lakes or rivers look very bad. And the water from the under the pyramid, this is the results. We sent it by, you know, by mail, so it went through the uh, Rengen, X-rays and so on from this airport to Japan, but it still kept hexagonal structure and crystal-like structure. This water is energetically alive, comparing to what we drink. It's a happy water. Recently, Rob has sent me a message saying that since he visited the Pyramid of the Sun and spending about 30 minutes every day in the tunnels, he has been able to reduce some of his medication regarding his ailments. He mentioned that he continues to drink Pyramid water and that, amongst other positive health changes, he has cut in half the daily doses for his heart and blood pressure. I want to talk more about the people because that's, for me, that's half of the story of my experience here and uh, yourself being one of them. You and I had a conversation uh, the other night that really helped me confront some things that maybe I uh, was hesitant to um, that are, are, are necessary and um, I think the, the <clears throat> most valuable piece of, of advice that you gave me was to not remain static to keep looking for new things to add to my repertoire and to my knowledge and my skills and never to rely on the same old, same old and just doing the same things. We always say that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting different results. It's very much like that. It's uh, remain in motion and remain on this trajectory that you're going up and learning and leveling up. Uh, and for some people it's uh, layers like Troishka dolls where they open one and then they have another one and then they open that and they have another one uh, And for some people it's articulated more like leveling up. Uh, I used to play video games when I was young So that's what I tend to gravitate to <laughs> um, And when you level up it becomes more difficult uh, and then you acquire the skills and the knowledge and then you're ready to level up again uh, and that's how I felt for the last five years uh, maybe six years since 2012 uh, I've been on this this progression um, and I feel like the people that I've met in the last two to three years have really helped me uh, accelerate that leveling up uh, and so I uh, it makes me excited for the future uh, it makes me feel like there's nothing that is not possible um, it's all within me and um, there's nothing else that I need. Uh, I just need to spend some time uh, with myself uh, and, and find that, that, balance, that balance and that power. This landscape helps people to change. They transform, they want to come back. They feel so at peace, so open, so alive. And when they come back over and over again, some of them don't even know why. It's like a calling, a remembering. And inside the soul, they feel so good when they're in this energy. From my own experience, I can say that Visoko is a special place where I got to meet a lot of wonderful people, of which some are still part of my life. This wasn't my first time in Bosnia. It is also true for me that something keeps bringing me back here. But my experiences here were not only pleasant, but also confronting and challenging. What touched me the most is the recent war that is still so visible and the everyday struggle of many families to survive. And on the same time that the people are so generous and proud to show me their country and their heritage. I can truly say that I'm inspired by the Bosnian people and this discovery. Every time when I'm here, I have the feeling being in two worlds in the same time. An old paradigm of war and struggle and a new paradigm of healing 
and connectivity. This observation made me realize that this is exactly what is going on in the world and inside of me, and that these two opposites are connected and basically one, and that our greatest challenge is to integrate both worlds, to become whole again. What I also realized is that this place is not necessarily the answer to our global or personal problems, whether they can be labeled physically, mentally, emotionally or spiritually. We cannot and shall not run from our conflicts, for they will follow us back home. And I agree with Rob that everything we need is within, and that there is nothing what is impossible, and that the only thing we need is to spend time with ourselves to find that balance and to find that power. To me, this place operates as a mirror. A mirror that reflects our forgotten knowledge and in heritage. If our modern technology is in fact more damaging to our health than we have so far realized, then I say, we all carry the responsibility within to restore Earth's healing frequency. This will require from each of us to show courage and strength in order to take a stand so that true autonomy can replace passive awareness. And what I experienced here over the past five years is that people are coming together. People of all kinds and that the new consciousness is rising. And not only here, but all over the world people are waking up. What I witnessed is what I see in the world and within myself. A trauma from the past that becomes visible in the light of a complete new world that is rising. What happens is everywhere you meet people. It's a place of co-creation, a co-creation of ideas, a place where people can start to ask questions and meet other people who are synchronized on their path. Many things have led to other opportunities across the world. And actually when we have events like the solstice or the equinox, traditionally over human history these, these points in time have been markers. They're at points when the energetic system in our universe, with our relationship with the sun, with the moon, is at its strongest. And when we get people together at these times of year, we actually can set a collective intent. What Bosnia does is it amplifies consciousness. And so when we get people People from all walks of life, from the fields of science, from fields of art, from people with money or without money, everybody comes and everybody here comes into some sort of cohesion. Very rarely when you come do you see people arguing or coming from a frustrated place. They, they want many people that I've heard have left addictions behind. They feel calm, they feel balanced and they feel happy. This is the biggest thing. And when we hold this intent to harmonize the world, we can send a very powerful vibration out because humanity now needs to find balance. We have something here that is like a machine using the landscape that I think if we look at it deeply with more investment from science, we can learn to create technology. I think it's already here that can actually change our world and change the type of machines and our dependence on them in this world, which will allow us to be free, to appreciate the beauty of having family, of having relationship, of having interaction with our landscape, having the freedom to actually live and having a quality of life that is really special, is what we are all craving, that brings inner peace and inner happiness. <laughs>
Being back home, and after having some time to let it all sink in, I wondered whether besides pyramids, more hidden and forgotten natural technologies can be found around the world that carry healing frequencies. Because I did figure that the world's population does not fit in this one particular place, and that it wasn't meant to. I believe that we as a people are all responsible for our own parts of the planet, that we need to return to ourselves to overcome our challenges, and that from there a new world will form, a world based on equality and abundance, a world where we feel responsible and alive, a world in true freedom.